Good morning. Welcome to the service of worship from wherever you are. It is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. We honor the traditional territory of the Simk on which this church in Valmont stands. I am the Reverend Dee McEachern, retired minister and standing in for Kim McNaughton, our minister from the Robson Valley Shared Ministry, Valmont and McBride Anglican Churches. As we come this morning, let us remember the light of Christ. And we give thanks. Our call to worship. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Jesus calls us into unconditional love. We choose to practice welcoming and hospitality for all. Our worship, hospitality, and kindness are like a cup of cold, refreshing water shared with those who are thirsty. Come to this place of abundance, grace, and compassion, and inclusiveness, where all are welcome, where all are included, where all are loved. Amen. We're going to have a song this morning, Let Us Build a House, and it's words and music by Marty Hogan. Uh, our musicians today are Shirley Taylor on the piano and Annette Ryerson on vocals. Let's listen. Build 
Let us pray. God of all, as your loving people, we share ourselves openly with generosity and sensitivity. We are like the cold water that quenches the thirst of those who are in need of acceptance, grace, and compassion. May our actions reflect our faith and spiritual practices of hospitality and welcoming in what we do and who we are. We do this in the name and spirit of Jesus, our mentor and friend. Amen. We'll have Robert now read our gospel reading from Matthew Chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O God of life and living, may we hear these words today and open us to new possibilities of being your word. Amen. My message today is about welcome. There, are, there was a program on ideas this week, uh, the CBC, called Lessons from the Plague in Athens 2,000 years ago. Eucydides is writing his history of Athens after a third of the population of Athens was decimated by a plague in the middle of a war with Sparta. Under the leadership of Pericles, he gives an address to the city-state. Yes, you are angry over deaths of your loved ones, but this too will pass, so hang in there. We depend on all of you working together to make a difference. At some time, 350 years later, we have Jesus preaching to his disciples, preparing them for their ministry after he is gone. It is another chaotic time with Rome. And Jesus says, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of the little ones in my name is a disciple. Truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Mohandas Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. We are fortunate enough to have a Bible study. And in this week's Bible study, it was decided that Jesus is taking a t or asking a tall order to the disciples then and to us now. We are called to welcome whoever 
welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me, God. Where do we begin? With ourselves? Are we prophets? What is a prophet? Am I qualified to do that? Well, in my own home, while my children were growing up, I was the power. Sometimes one of the daughters or my son would challenge a wrong which they saw. Some unfairness in how I was treating one over the other. And they would name it. If power is good, then that power would have to take time to listen to what is being said and weigh it carefully, even prayerfully. If the power was not good, there was no room to be heard. And punishment may well often be unfair. So am I qualified to be a prophet in my home? I think I was. It took work and unconditional love. We also may be prophets in our own community. If we see some unfairness and raise that awareness in a way that people will listen, an action can be taken for change. Politics, of course, is one way of being prophetic. As Carol raised in her message last week, Jesus was not happy with the money changers in the synagogue. Basically, Jesus saw them as greedy, selling animals and birds to people for their offering to God. The more you paid or could pay, the more assurance you would get to heaven. So Jesus dumped their tables, told them to get out. Perhaps that is more aggressive than I am suggesting. However, when we see unfairness, do we just talk about it or do we actually do something? Like write your MP, call your counselor, and other, other people that have power. So what is a prophet? There was a Richard Rohr, and he explained that prophet is speaking truth to power. Speaking truth to power. I think that's hugely important to think about. So when we look at ourselves today, we also hear a lot about righteous person. A righteous person in our Bible study, we decided, is one that probably has all the right answers, perhaps goes around with a superior attitude, arrogant. Actually, a righteous person is quite the opposite. It is someone who is humble, one who has no expectations of others, who is willing to be surprised, have a sense of humor, be nonviolent in violent times, not asking for more than they deserve. So when we look at ourselves today, can we be that righteous person? being able to leave our ego at the door, open to listening to those who are different from ourselves, and offering that welcome as Jesus offered, with no conditions. How can we prepare ourselves to be that welcome? Perhaps in following a form of daily meditation, Saint Ignatius, a bishop of Antioch, not long after the death of Jesus, began a practice called examine. 
at the end of each day. The intentional becoming aware of God in your day for what we are grateful for. Also to ask ourselves, what was the learning? What could we have done differently? A couple of thousand years later, Oprah also suggested at the end of your day, a gratitude journal to name at least three things we are grateful for that day and to make an effort to name new things each day. This gives us a positive way at looking at life. But in the process, we are becoming more aware of nature. We are becoming more aware of our relationships with those around us men, women, our families, our children, and most importantly, our relationship with God, Jesus, Spirit. What if we believed that the message of welcome was for everyone, not just a select few? Then we are all prophets, and all righteous folk. Elizabeth Johnson from a Lutheran theological school in Cameroon says, live your life, be humble, not smart or have the right word at just the right time. After all, we are the body of Christ. We are the hands and feet of Christ. If you are doing this for the least of these, you are doing it for me. To be love. To be community. Pericles, before the time of Christ in Athens, knew the value of community and learned it in the time of plague. We too are learning the value of community in the time of pandemic, racism, sexism, homophobia. I am thankful to be part of this community of faith, a part of the body of Christ, ready to respond with a cup of water, not just in Jesus' name, but in any disciple's name. Cool and refreshing on a hot summer's day. And as Gandhi reminds us, be the change you want the world to be. May it be so, and amen. Our hymn is now, Oh for a World by Miriam Therese Winter. We'll sing part of it now and we'll sing part of it after. Prayers of the People, taken from Clouds in Glory by David Adam. We pray for your church, that it may be a holy church, a serving church. May we reveal your love through our care for and our acceptance of others. 
We pray for the work of the church among the poor and the oppressed, that you may come to the glorious liberty of the children of God. May the Lord do it. Guide the leaders of nations and communities into the way of peace and goodwill. We pray for those who strive to bring peace between various factions. For all who seek to bring unity and harmony to our world, that they may all be guided by your spirit. May the Lord do it. O oh God, make our homes places of holiness and hospitality. In our dealings, fill us with grace and goodness. Make us welcoming and friendly. May the Lord do it. We remember before you all prisoners of conscience, all who are in prison through injustice and tyranny, we pray for the work of Amnesty International. We pray for all those who have lost freedom through sickness and immobility. We pray for the world weary, the heavily burdened, the worn out and the broken, that all may know in their hearts and glorious liberties of the children of God. May the Lord do it. We give thanks for all who are now victorious, all who have left behind the restrictions of this life and are walking before you as children of God. We pray especially for Clara Lopeter as she passes to another realm with you, O oh God. May we, with them, know your abiding presence. May the Lord do it. As we continue to pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we'll sing the last part of O oh For a World by Miriam Therese Winter. Oh, for a world where everyone respects each other's ways, where love is lived and all is done with justice and with praise. Thank you again to Michael Peters and Valmont Community Television, to our musicians Shirley and Annette, and our scripture reader Robert Bell. Carol Buston will be giving the service next Sunday, and so we look forward to another inspiring message from Carol. As we go, we are welcomed. May we go out and welcome one another in the name of God, Creator, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and each one of us. 
go in peace. Amen. Amen. We go out and our service begins. <laughs>